Um, I'm going to ask a stupid question right off the bat about the tutors, which is when you were offered the role of Anne Boleyn, did you know the fate of your character? <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what attracted you to the role? Because it was a phenomenal opportunity. Um, such a great network, such a great show. Um, Jonathan attached um, an incredible period of history. I would have been stupid to say no. What's um, What was filming the, uh, the first and second season like? It's such a joy as an actor to have that extensive a period of time to play one character. It means that you can really delve into the psychology. You know them inside out. Um, you don't normally get that much time with a character, so you can really, really get in there. Did you do any research about Anne before, before taking on the role? I felt a responsibility to know my history, even though, you know, there's a lot of artistic license. Well, not a lot, actually. There's less than you would imagine. Um, so I thought it was best to, at least from my head, know my history, to reconcile the two. Um, the real Anne with the artistic interpretation of Michael Hurst and myself. So, yeah, I had a great lot of pleasure of reading about the real woman. I read about four or five history books, so. What was the biggest surprise uh, that uh, that came out of you doing this role of Anne, uh, discovering Anne? The biggest surprise to me was... I didn't really realize how influential Anne was within the whole um, Reformation, um, Reformation, sorry, um, as an ambassador of it, the revolution of it. I mean, she was genuinely an evangelical. She was genuinely a religious person. And a lot of people think that, you know, Catherine of Aragon was the religious one and Anne was just sort of this avarice, um, power-driven woman. But she didn't. She genuinely had a faith. Of the, new, of the new wave of Europe as a Protestant, and I found that fascinating. Is it, is it, is it I, I don't want to use the word depressing, but is it a little sad that you, you don't get to do this role now? I mean, <laughs> we, may see, we may see you again in like maybe a sort of flashback or something, but unfortunately we're not going to see her in the future seasons. Yes, no, I have a little joke with Michael Hurst, the writer, about you know, a dream sequence or a, a ghost sequence. Um, you, keep your fingers crossed. Um, <laughs> it's, it's very sad. I mean, yeah, I mean it is painful um, to know that your family, and on a big show like that, everyone does become your family, cast and crew. You know, they're going on without you. But, I mean, we've come to the end of Anne's story, and um, I grieved her, certainly, once I finished playing her. Um, definitely grieved her. Um, but, you know, the only constant is change. We move on. And Tudors is going strong, so now I get to sit on the sofa with popcorn and watch the show. You know, I get to be lazy <laughs> about it. Excellent. Now, in uh, sort of a degree separation of television, you get to work with X-Files creator Chris Carter in a new film. Absolutely. Um, that was a very exciting experience. That was great to come over to um, stateside went over to L.A. at the beginning of 2008 and um, worked with Chris and his team over there, a fantastic young actor called McCard Brooks. And, um, yeah, Fence Walker um, was a, a wonderful experience. You got to work with uh, Heath Ledger during Casanova. Do you have a favorite memory of, uh, of working with Heath? Um, yeah, Heath um, and I played chess and he checkmated me in about five moves. <laughs> he was um, an incredible human being. He was athletic, he was erudite. He, 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 was, he seemed to be good at everything, Heath. And I remember sort of very faux modestly sitting down to chess, thinking that we'd be there for a couple of hours, and he demolished me like that. So that makes me smile. Wow, in five moves, that's, wow. Something, I've had friends something ridiculous. I, I, I've seen friends do that to me. I think it's where you move the pawn and the bishop, and the next thing you know, your queen's got you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. 
You know, I, I th- another another stupid question, but I'm a huge Monty Python fan, Benny Hill fan, pretty much just about every English comedy that's that's come across to America. I've adored. Is there is there a particular style of comedy that you've liked in America that you've enjoyed when it came over to England? Oh, most of them. Um, I've got quite a I've got quite a broad, um, you know, comedy appreciation and I think you know the way you guys get a plethora of our shows I've enjoyed with you guys I mean I was brought up on Frasier I think you know most of my generation were and then all the way up to modern day things like you know um, Family Guy and so forth we love American comedy we love it I'd love to do some actually